And while being born in quarantine, I made a spec ad for Made Good. Here's the video. So all the footage you're about to see, I want to let you know, is about a month ago. Between different edits, having to build a computer, a bunch of different work situations. Uh, it took me a while to get this up and running, but here we go. I just want to give some thoughts. A lot of the footage and a lot of things that I end up shooting and showing you how I did, I did not use. I just basically want to make as many different assets and elements as I could to play around with the editing. I'm still going to show you it because I believe uh, learning from failure and learning from the mistakes that you make and seeing the situations and the solutions to overcome it really helps you become a better filmmaker and just a better person and creative in general. So I want to show you guys all that. Without further ado, here is the behind the scenes. Okay, so. I'm bored in quarantine, just like everybody else. I can't keep editing all day. I need to shoot with freaking Rona and with like all the riots. I'm anxious and I need to shoot right now. So what the plan is, is we're gonna do a spec ad for Made Good. It's a granola bar company. And one thing I wanna talk about, you know, spec ads is that try to go for a company that is smaller and may not be utilizing video or photos to their advantage. I see a lot of content creators on YouTube making spec ads. But they're making, they're making spec ads for these large companies that are utilizing advertisements. One thing I want to make a disclaimer for is that it is raining, thunderstorm, and there's construction, so there's going to be a lot of noise. Right now, I have my living room all set up for this situation, but I have a plan, and there's so much work to be done still. I'm watching Avatar. I have my shot list here. I'm ready to go. I don't know exactly what the plan is just yet. I mean, I have the shots that I want to do, but I'm still playing around with it. I don't know exactly what the plan is, but I know that my main light's gonna be the 300D, then as a kind of filler is gonna be the 120D, and then as a rim light, I'm gonna use the LS1. So I don't know exactly how I'm setting it up, but I'm just gonna be going ahead, playing around. I have all my fruits and veggies, all my props ready to go. So just kind of follow along. Let's just watch this time lapse, and I'll talk to you along the way. Let's do this. He's a little scared right now. It's thundering and there's construction going on outside. So please excuse the noise. I know he's gonna be a little worried throughout the entire process, but let's have some fun. Time lapse time. Something I wanna mention, you're probably wondering, why do I have Avatar in the background? Well, I like Avatar. One thing I forgot to mention is that we're gonna be using the TV as our main backlight. We're gonna be putting a green screen on there. We're gonna be using some fun colors, playing around with it. I wanna start playing around with LED technology in my filmmaking. I know a lot of good studios are replacing green screen with LEDs, giant, massive LEDs, but it's a little play run. We can play with it. We can do some fun product shots. Now that we're stuck in quarantine, we can experiment with these type of things and we can do whatever background we want and just play around with it since we can't leave the house. Let's start getting creative and experiment with it. I know I see a lot of creators doing it, so I have some confidence in myself that I'm gonna be able to pull it off. All right, let's get back to work. It seems like our hair light's gonna need to use a C stand for that. One thing I want to point out uh, now that Avatar is on break or is going to the next episode, uh, I wanted to point out that I'm going to be using the C500 as the video camera. I will be taking some stills. That's not the priority of what's going on today, but I am going to be using some stills. And for the stills, I'm going to be using the 1DX. I want to try to use my 100 millimeter macro lens because that is my favorite lens for products and stuff like that. And I'm gonna be using the Ronin slider. Um, this is the first generation Ronin slider. I'm using the one pound flywheel. And then I'm gonna be using the motor. The flywheel is just for tests and stuff like that, just to get a feel for it. I'm afraid that I might not get the movement that I'm looking for with the 100 millimeter macro. 
So we're gonna play around with it, but I believe I will get the movement I'm looking for. So yeah, I'm just setting up the camera right now. I'm playing with it. I wanna be shooting this as raw as I can. I had some projects where I was gonna be using the 5.9K raw. Um, however, due to the Rona, it got canceled. That was actually gonna be a really fun shoot because it was gonna take place in Vegas and it was a short film. It was gonna be freaking crazy. Hopefully things get back to normal and we could start, you know, doing those projects again. But in the meantime, I wanna, you know, play around with the 5.9K. I am gonna be shooting um, C-Log3. So you're gonna be seeing me bust up the laptop a couple times. I'm gonna make a picture profile for this, for this specific shoot. And I'm gonna be using the Ninja Blade um, to have my LUT on there and then have the C-500 just give me a clean, um, output of the C-Log so that way I can measure out exposure and all that fun jazz. But yeah, that's the plan. Um, I'm starting to realize based on the timing today and all the other things I have to do, this may be a couple days shoot, um, which is totally fine. You know, a lot of Chinese uh, proverbs say it's not how fast you go. All that matters is that you stay consistent and you finish. And that's, I think, what the point of this is just a spec ad. There's no deadlines. I want to make sure I get this right, update the website properly. So. Um, we're definitely gonna play around with it. Today, I just wanna focus on the main hero shot, which is gonna be all the products together with all the fruits and veggies and the granola and get all the single shots of all the vegetables that I got because I don't want them to go bad on me and get all you know ugly and stuff. I got them in yesterday. I can't really go out and get more veggies because it is storming. It's like hurricane season already in Miami, so um, we gotta do what we gotta do, you know what I mean? But let's have some fun in the meantime. Back to the time lapse and listening to the avatar. So one thing that I noticed the moment I did my initial setup is I don't like this bend that's going on. It's also causing reflections with the glass here or this like, you know, transparent uh, plastic that goes on in products. So uh, by remedying this, I'm getting these little dowels, I'm cutting them up and I'm making them um, kind of spread up here. But I need to put gaff tape along this side so that way it doesn't, you know, peer through. And it's just a good thing too to put something behind your products that you shoot so that way it gives it a little extra pop and instead of that transparency and, you know, make it cohesive. I'm um, using these green dowels that I had planned to do some green screen stuff and some spins and get some separation, but I have so many of them I could just start cutting them up and uh, be effective for uh, the situation here. But yeah, that's the process now. This is taking me a little longer than I thought would be, but ultimately um, quality over quantity, right? So let's get this done right, make it look beautiful. Um, still trying to figure out this green screen situation, but yeah, that's the process so far. Wanted to keep you guys updated. Still watching Avatar, by the way. It's phenomenal, I'm on season two. Uh, by the end of this, I'm probably gonna eat out the episode. So let's continue. Okay, so we finished doing that. I have to bend awkwardly for this shot, but whatever, it's cool, whatever. Um, it seems like it came out pretty okay, if you ask me. Uh, it's still not perfect, but we can iron those out in post, literally. Um, before, this is how it looked like. It was like nice and dinky and schlinky, and it just was like, ugh. You know, you wanna make sure when you're doing this stuff, it comes out right, it looks right. Um, it looks picture perfect. Um, and that's really part of the process, having that eye and just trying to find creative solutions to do it. Um, I have these dowels. You probably could have did it with some wire or anything like that. Another tick you can do too is, I don't wanna open these up, but what you can do is you could uh, cut it open and just stuff it with stuff, and that usually helps. But we're not really doing that here, and this table is so wobbly, it is crazy. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go back. Uh, next steps is that I'm gonna go eat lunch now because it's 12 o'clock, I'm hungry. Uh, I was up today at six o'clock, so I wanna eat. Haven't eaten breakfast, and um, then we're gonna go from there. Hey, my cool cats and kittens. So I'm back from lunch. Um, I'm nice and energized. I had some coffee, so I'm feeling refreshed. I want to do a color test now because I want to be able to put a kind of color accurate to what I'm going to be color grading this uh, onto my monitor. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using this uh, props I'm going to be using for shooting as well as some other fun colors. I don't want to take all the veggies out right now just because like it's a situation and I just want to get this finished. So what I have here are the tomatoes because that was easy. They're not really wet or anything like that. A bubble sore for greenery because he's nice and green and different shades of it. Um, shovel knight because he's nice and blue. Uh, this 
plastic pair that I have and just kind of start getting a feel for how the coloring is and the coloring process. So that way I can throw a lot onto my monitor. I like to work with the closest possible color rendition possible, uh, especially when I'm in the studio um, because that way I know what I'm creating. It always comes out for a bit of project. That's why when I'm doing photos, I'm always tethering. When I'm in the studio, of course. Um, so yeah, this is like as close as I can get uh, without throwing on to like a huge monitor or what have you, having a color greatest uh, on set. So we're just gonna play around with it, get a feel for it, and then we're gonna go from there. Okay, I'm back. I put the LUT on the camera. I have my custom made background. I'm kind of happy with the colors. Obviously we fine tuning it when I'm actually editing it, but that way I just get a feel for it. If you want to see a tutorial on how to make your own custom LUT, add it to your monitor while you're recording for what any studio setup, let me know and I can make you tutorials. Okay, so from here, we're going to set dress the hero shop, put all the little fun things together that we need, all the granola, the veggies, the fruits, all that fun stuff. And then from there, we're going to get individual shots of the veggies and all that fun stuff. And if I still have time today uh, to keep moving, and then I'm going to get individual shots of each of the bags kind of rotating and all that fun stuff. Um, that's my goal for today is get those fun shots out of the way. A lot of it is going to be compositing. The only real shot that I'm not compositing all that much is going to be this hero shot. So it needs a lot of attention to detail because I'm not going to be working that, that on the edit. Um, keep that in mind. I want to keep things as practical as possible, but sometimes or well, unable to do that, you know, we work a lot of times on set and we learn from our mistakes before to implement it today. So. That's what we're we'll doing. Follow along. Okay, so I'm feeling super comfortable right now with the Master Hero shot that I have there. I'm gonna be taking some stills with the 1DX and then I'm gonna be taking shots with the Canon C500 Mark II. I'm gonna play around with it. Um, I'm feeling nice and comfortable. Make some, make some tweaks along the way. Um, I had some hard time finding to play some stuff and all that fun jazz, but we'll keep playing around with it and evolving the set as it goes. Remember, nothing's permanent. You could change things. We can edit things around. Let's have some fun with it. All right, let's do this. Okay, so now I feel comfortable with the fact that I got a bunch of slider shots. I changed back around. I know I put the green screen up. I want to try to use the main colors as best as I can. I guess it always looks the nicest, the most crisp, but you know, we got to play with what we have and play around with it. I did notice I forgot to turn on my uh, hair light over there, but it's totally okay. I put it on and just redid the shots. Uh, as I was going through, I kind of made some fine tunements. You know, it took me around 20 minutes just to get this one shot, which is ultimately probably about one tiny second in the commercial, but it's one that ties it all together. It's the hero shot. It's the most important in my opinion, because it's the last one that you remember has all this fun stuff. So what I'm be doing now is I'm going to be actually switching tripods um, and just getting really nice close up detail stuff just to play around with so that way I have and then I'm going to break everything down and then as I'm breaking things apart I'm going to be taking some single shots of the products so that way I can you know play around with it and, and have that for later but yeah that's what's happening right now and uh, follow along and I gotta take this off the tripod so I gotta I gotta figure that out somehow. One thing I want to emphasize here is that I have deliberately chosen the pink bag the strawberry bag to be my main bag I like it the most, I see it on their social media the most, and that's why I chose it. So we gotta make a little adjustment here. See, pa -ching. Nothing crazy, but just to make sure things look cohesive. And as you can tell, my background for the yellow is black. And I'm not really gonna go in and try to correct that. I'm just gonna let it be, because these are fast cuts. And I just want to emphasize all these little things here, like made good strawberry granola. And let the scene that you create 
you know, take you places. Like, obviously, like, let, like, follow the chocolate chips until you get to the strawberry, you know? Like, just follow it along. Give purpose to your movement. Make it feel natural. So that way, you know, follow the curves of the banana. Just, you know, follow the curves that these fruits give you, you know? There's natural curves to all this. You just gotta follow it along. And I'm right now shooting at a solo shallow depth of field just because I wanted it to be nice and to have that fall off and play with it. But again, I'm shooting really close. I'm shooting at a 100 millimeter macro. Okay, so it is uh, day two of this fun little spec shoot that I am doing. Um, today I want to be getting single shots of all different products, as well as like uh, the little fruits, veggies, and like the actual little like nuggets and stuff like that, so that way I can composite it in. And I also want to do some throw. I'm going to throw some things up in the air today, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, it's going to be a lot more individual, not so detailed and specific, but a couple things I got prepped for today. One thing about food photography is that you want those little bubbles, those water bubbles on there, and so that way it feels like it's fresh and a lot of fun jazz. And the way you do that is that um, you get some baby oil, and you get some suppositories and you melt it and you make a little concoction here and you get this. I've had this for a long time. Once you get the right formula down, it's phenomenal. It's great. It lasts a long time. You just spray it on the fruits and uh, it's ready to go. So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, a lot of individual shots. I'm feeling good. Uh, it's day two. Uh, it's not early in the morning. It's like one o'clock in the afternoon because I had to do an edit before. I actually have my laptop right now uh, exporting a project. And then once that gets back, we're going to go straight into working. But right now we're just going to prep everything, getting everything ready for today's shoot shooting and then tomorrow hopefully we're gonna get the stop motion done a lot of overhead stuff just on green screen we'll play around with it i'm not 100 sure how i want to do it maybe use projector or what have you just that way i don't know we're still playing with it that's day three today is day two one step at a time i do have a somewhat pseudo plan but i'm just ranting now when i'm going to be shooting the kind of like throwing up in the air i'm probably gonna be shooting at 120 frames a second now i know the color rendition is going to change but hopefully those small details don't make a huge difference during my edit. I am today at the end of the day going to be checking my colors and how it all comes out to see if that worked properly. If not, I'm going to come back and then reshoot the individual stuff at the same color profile uh, that the 120 is shooting on. It's lesser quality. I'm not going to be able to shoot at 4K, but I think I'm going to be able to pull it off. Those are just things that goes through my head, these small little things that don't really matter, probably most people won't even notice I can correct it, but I just want it to be the most perfect thing that I possibly can get. And yeah, so far the LUT's been working nice and I just wanna get things rock and rolling, so let's do this. So like right now, um, I had some technical difficulties with the drill. So I'm shooting by myself, I had a hard time getting it in place, holding it right, getting the lighting just right. So instead, I'm just gonna use the Lazy Susan um, in this like contraption there. I have some styrofoam, lifted it all up to get it off the ground a little bit to get the right height. And that way it's eye level with my camera. And then uh, what I'm gonna be doing is then getting different tomatoes and then plopping it on different angles and then composing it or, you know, and then cutting it around there because it was too difficult to just do it by myself, holding the drill, trying to get the frame right, hold it steady. So I'm just going to do that and then composite uh, different sizes and then we'll go from there and see how that comes out. Well, well uh, see you guys around in time lapse time.
that's a wrap for today. And I feel really good with the stuff I got, especially with uh, this little concoction at the end. I get really happy that I know I'm gonna get some good shots of it, you know, kind of all flying in there. Tomorrow, I'm going to be getting shots of things being flown in the air, like a lot of granola, chocolate chips. That's gonna be a, a very big mess, gotta keep my dog away. And then we're gonna be doing the stop motion side of things, or at least start stop motion. I realize I'm gonna need more uh, granola pieces for stop motion because of the sheer size of it. And the way I'm gonna be doing that in my head, of course, is that when you shoot a projector up and have it outlay, how I'm gonna be kind of going at the best of stop motion, I'm gonna be using the program Dragon Frame, so we see how it goes. Today took a lot longer than I initially thought. Again, the devil's in the details, and I wanna get these things just right, play around with it. Um, I know there's gonna be a lot of compositing, so today wasn't, you know, exciting, explosive, you know, you're gonna see the final product in the camera, but it's a lot of compositing, so I felt like really got it nailed, played around with it, so that way I can really move with it. One thing I was having a hard time deciding was um, having the slider go for 15 seconds or 25 seconds, um, just because, you know, the longer it went, when I speed ramp, the more spins I'm gonna have, but I didn't know if I was gonna not like it or is it not gonna be tasteful, so I definitely played around with that and had it for post-production there, and just got a lot of different elements, made sure each had enough different variety in the chocolate pieces and in the granola pieces, so that way when I'm compositing different ones, it all looks nice and natural. Some of them are gonna spin, some of them are gonna stay frozen. So with each one, I'm probably getting around three different styles to be able to composite, and that, that, that adds up to you know variety and stuff like that. So we'll see how it all plays out. I may be annoyed when I'm editing or not, but we'll stay tuned and I'll see you uh, tomorrow for the third day and should hopefully be the last day. Okay, so now it's day three, and uh, it should be the last day of shooting this. I have my Hunter Hunter shirt, I got my Hisaka mug, I am excited, I'm ready to go. Nothing's in this, I'm just doing it for fools. But uh, what are we gonna be doing today is we're gonna be throwing granola, and one thing I wanna be noting is that we're doing a lot of pieces, a lot of particles, and my thought is usually when there's a lot of particles and a lot of movement um, with green screen, it tends to get muddy and you can't really see the detail, so I'm gonna be shooting uh, each one on the color background that's it according to. So yes, it is gonna be a tedious process because I'm gonna have to do it at least three times, probably twice, gotta pick it up and redo it. Um, that's gonna be one. One's just gonna be the chocolate with like the, the cookies and like the um, little, little chocolate chips. Then the other one's gonna be just plain white and white with chocolate chips. So we're gonna be playing around with it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. One thing I wanna know about the camera is that I wanna be shooting at the fastest frame rate I possibly can, which is 120 frames a second. However, with the Canon C500 Mark II, you have to be in 16 millimeter crop. So I am gonna have to go to a wide lens. I can't use my 100 millimeter macro for this sadness, but that's okay. It leaves one tricky challenge. The challenge is now I have to shift the lighting back a little bit to light all the things going up, but I can't get any reflections on the TV. The reason being is I want to try to get as much space as I can so when I composite, I don't have to worry about it and move out all those little details because it'd be almost impossible. Another thing I have to do too is switch is 86 a slider, go to the tripod, and then continue to move. And then last thing of the day, which is gonna be the most tedious thing to do, is gonna be the stop motion. I want to so with the granola, I wanna recreate this little like circle thing with the spaces. So what I did is in Photoshop, I went in and made these like little circles so I can project it. And we'll, we'll, we'll get to that when that's time. But that should be the last thing today. We're gonna throw some granola right now. I'm feeling good. Got another edit done this morning. So I'm ready to rock and roll. I know some of you are curious right now. How far along are you in Avatar? Well, when I started this, I was like in season one, probably the later episodes. I'm now in season three. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna finish the season when this is all over, especially when it comes to editing, I time lapse time. So one thing that I'm noticing immediately now, uh, just setting that up, is I'm getting reflections from the outdoors. Today is finally a beautiful, beautiful sunny day in Miami. Um, however, uh, it was dark and cloudy, so I didn't have to really worry about those things before. But now we got the beautiful light coming in, natural light. But I want as much control. You know, one thing you can do is get Dubatine, or you can get some type of blackout. But this is just a little, ching easy. Easy as that. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, we still got a huge light source with the door. That is actually causing reflections, so we gotta manage it. How are we gonna do that? Follow me. Good enough. Now uh, we properly manage the reflections on the TV. Look, you see? Now it's all nice and dark in here, but now we got no reflections coming from the TV on that end. So great, and I got to change the light for you guys, but we'll continue to move on. 
continue to move on with nice shiny bright positivity. Nice bright shiny positivity. Now I have like no natural light in here. It's gonna be this one little light panel because I don't feel like setting all that up for you guys. So one thing I want to point out with the Canon C500 Mark II, shooting 120 frames a second um, with C-Log is I don't get any autofocus. Probably worry, don't worry, not a, not a big issue. Should not be putting autofocus on this anyways because you don't want it to be hunting and going crazy. So what we're doing is I'm putting like a test subject where things will be falling, grab focus there and then go from there. Then you probably want to, Manny, why don't you use your Canon why don't you use the Canon 1DX for this bad boy? Because you could shoot at 120 frames a second and uh, be at 1080 non-crop. Well, good question. And the answer to that is C-Log. I want to be shooting at C-Log so I can keep the picture profile. And actually, I could be shooting at 2048, uh, which is like an ultra fine HD. So I have a little more quality to that. Keep the colors on nice rendition and, you know, play around with it. Have some fun with the shoot we're doing. So we're going to continue to set up throw the lights, that thing is gonna get overexposed real quick, real fast for you guys, but we'll fix it later. So we're gonna strike the lights. Always oh, say striking, why not? Why, why, why not have set etiquette while you're at home, you know? Striking. Striking. And maybe, yeah, striking, cool. So what we're gonna be doing is grabbing focus. And how the fuck am I gonna grab focus when I'm all by myself? Okay, well, first thing to notice here is that I have this light giving me a shadow, giving me reflections. I don't want that. So the way I'm gonna be curing that is going up a little more. If you go up and down, that tends to cure a lot of um, shadow uh, reflection issues you may have. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid to cut your light. You know, put something on it so it kills a little reflections, even though when it's like very minimum. Um, you could use flags, you could use whatever. I'm gonna use this little piece of thing because that should be enough to cure what I'm remedying here. But don't be afraid, you know, you gotta play with it, get it just right. Um, I don't wanna bust out one of my flags because if I do that, I gotta use another stand. And I'm already running low on space here bust out another C stand and I kinda don't, not really in the mood to do that right now. Booyah, booyah, woola, woola, woola. Get something a weirdly shaped size of where things are gonna be throwing. So like right here, pop that on right there and we'll get an off focus test. Okay, let's do this. And Oh, that was a bad, I, that didn't work as it planned. I didn't even have the right frame rate on, shit. Stupid, I didn't have the right, I didn't even have the right shutter speed. Hey, could you make sure he doesn't come here? Oh, I wasn't even, I wasn't even rolling. What, I wasn't even thinking. That one felt really good. I just, that one just felt great. Let's start. I'm just throwing them up because like, why not? One got on my shirt, one's in my shirt. Okay. I know this is gonna be terrible. Like, it's gonna look cool or whatever, but it's just gonna be fucking a havoc to pick up. I'm trying to get the biggest chunks I can. So, it registers. What am I doing with my life? <laughs>
Okay, so I just finished having lunch. I'm feeling energized. I'm ready to go. Got everything cleaned up from the floor in terms of granola and all that fun jazz. Next, we're gonna be shooting the time-lapse stuff. And the way we're gonna be doing that is that we're gonna 86 the C500 Mark II. Then we're gonna go use the 1DX and we're gonna hook that up straight to the camera and then we're gonna have a projector on top being my guideline so I can follow around and we're gonna do a green screen on that so that way I can key it out and play with it. But the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna get all the granola that we have crushed up as much as we can. Not so it's like a fine powder, but just like so it's crushed up enough and then just mix it all up so all the colors in there and then make the circle and then we're done with the shoot. Um, so let's see how that's gonna go. I have to organize all of this again. Gonna get some, what I'm gonna get some overhead lights. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So I think you already know what time it is. It's time lapse time. Okay, so one problem I am facing currently is that this guy uh, I thought had HDMI because it said HD video on the box. I got this for free. This was a gift, by the way. I got it a long time ago. But it's it's this like old yellow, red, the RC inputs that like nobody uses and I don't have like an adapter for HDMI. My goal was to project my pattern that I was gonna do on this and turn it off and on, but I guess that's not gonna work, is it? So. This is trash, it's not gonna be working. Um, then what I was gonna do is in Dragon Frame, you could um, make little paths and stuff like that. It's not the best to like follow around, but it's usable. Uh, but guess what? It's been so long since I've used Dragon Frame, it doesn't work with 1DX. So that's another challenge that I have to face. And my last option is I'm just gonna do this in Lightroom, combine it all, put it in Premiere, make a little video out of it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this little dial here and make the circles that I'm gonna make with this. This is actually too small. And uh, lightly, lightly uh, trace it so that way uh, when I do my video or what have you, it doesn't really show. I can just green screen it out and it comes together. So that's the next step. One thing I wanna know is I have these little like um, dental tooth kits. They're great for stop motion and little things like this for like fun little movements. So yeah, that's where I'm currently at right now. This might be the right size that I'm looking for. Maybe, yeah, that seems good. If not, yeah, it seems just about right. So what I'm gonna be doing is, hopefully this works. Let me, um, let me see how this looks on Lightroom. Okay, so I got my crushed up uh, granola. It unfortunately got into a fine powder because had like different variety. Next time I would do this, I'll probably get the different shapes and then like square it up. But yeah, it should be fine. I'm gonna just do a circle for now. I want it so I can move along, but then I realized I don't think I have the ability to have it move simultaneously. So I'm just gonna start at the ends and then come around and then see how that plays around. I'm using Lightroom, which kind of sucks that I don't get to use uh, Dragon Frame, but it is what it is. I'm trying not to move the table. Again, I'm using these dental tools to help with uh, making things all nice and neat and we'll play around with it. And uh, I think you guys wanna get a little closer so you can see the action. So I am now done with the stop motion thing. And you know what? It didn't take me as long as it do. It's not as perfect as I want it to be. That's fine. I realized I forgot to do the opening bag shots. And um, well, I am uh, I'm gonna do it with the 1DX. Uh, and the way I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna put my monitor and just do it with my monitor off to the side. It'll make my life so much easier to do it that way. So yeah, let me pick this up and get those last three shots. We're doing on the green screen. so. Shouldn't be too crazy and uh, be ready to rock and roll. Let's do this. 
this is my martini shot. So that's a wrap. We just finished shooting. Uh, oh, oh uh, I can stop this recording now because that's going to waste a lot of 4K. It's huge files. But yeah, that is a wrap. Uh, super happy with what we got done, with what we accomplished here. I feel good. I feel strong. Uh, with the content we finished creating here. There's gonna be a lot of editing to do. Um, I'm gonna be playing around for the first time um, with the proxy files from the C500. And I can give now, after this shoot, I can give a proper review of the C500 using every single element of the C500. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching. By the way, if you guys wanna see me try to recreate any other commercials or cinematic scenes or anything cinematic that you want me to try to recreate, let me know and I'll try to do it all by myself during quarantine. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It's a new YouTube challenge I'm trying to create. So let's do this. Let's push each other to limits. Thank you guys so much for watching and I really do appreciate it. And by the way, I might make an editing tutorial on this just in case how things go. So I'll see you on the next one. Kiss, kiss.